Hello, this video is on custom events. These are suitable for workflows you keep on using on the same page. For example, you could have three buttons on different locations on your page and you want each button essentially to do the same thing. For example, the button when pressed could create a new thing, set the slug of the thing, save that thing to the user, make amendments to the thing, send an email. It could also be 15 steps long. And then if we go over to the other button, we want the other button to do the same things. Maybe just one part of like a step six is different, but both of them contain the same series of steps one to five. And the issue with this is if you notice something you don't like, a typo, or you just want to make a change, that you're gonna be forced to do this change in step five of this button, as well as this button, as well as this button. And that will take time. Or even worse, you might forget editing one of the buttons and users will not have a uniform experience. There's a way around this, custom events. So you can click on this empty box and go over to create a custom event. Here I've already created it and I've got all the five steps we had before in here. This is great because when we now click the button, we just have one step, trigger the custom event. This can be found underneath custom events, trigger a custom event. And that means that when we spot one mistake, we don't have to change it every time, but just underneath the custom event, we have to make the change. What's important to know about custom events is that while I press it and the custom event executes, I as a user am not allowed to leave the page. So the custom event will not finish computing as it's working client side, not server side. In principle, you can use a backend workflow to fulfill some of the same tasks. In this case, when I press the button API workflow down here, of course, I don't have to name it that for it to work. Then I can create a new FAQ, but in step two, I can refer to a API workflow in my backend workflows, which also works now and takes the FAQ and does the rest of the steps in the back end. This means as soon as step two has finished computing that the user can go over to another page because it's all server side, not client side. Especially if you've got maybe 20 steps, this may be a better idea. So if we go over here, of course, underneath create FAQ, we've got the same steps again. But this time, of course, server side. By the way, here, we also have the option to use custom events. So imagine you have three API workflows and again, they have very similar step one to step fives. So again, you don't want to make the same amendment in this step five as in this step five as in this step five. So also underneath backend workflows, you can actually go over here to create a custom event. And then here again, you can just trigger a custom event within the API workflow and this way, in principle, this is a backend workflow custom event. Okay. What's also very nice, you can use reusable elements together with custom events. Why would you do that? So when we have a page like bubble vids, if you notice here underneath custom events, if we do a schedule API workflow, we can actually select all of the API workflows. And this will be possible on any page of our app. So also the index page. So we can select all API workflows found underneath backend workflows. If we go over to trigger a custom event, we can actually only select the two I've got down here. This is a shortcoming because it means that on every page you have to have the same custom events. Or do you? Turns out you don't. You can actually create a reusable element. In this case, I called mine all custom events. I made it tiny, just one times one pixel. I can't even see it on here because all it does is it holds all the custom events across my entire app. So it could, of course, also be 50. And then here I can just paste in the new ones I had. And then I can basically refer to it from any page, not just bubble vids, but also from all these other pages. So then how does the button look? Again, if we have this button here, we can select custom event and then trigger a custom event from a reusable element. We've dragged in the 
kind of the reusable element, which we call all custom events A. I even dragged it in twice accidentally. And then we can select any of the four custom events. This is great because instead of having to edit the custom event on every page, we just have to edit it once within the reusable element, very similar to the header and footer. But at this time, of course, not for looking good, but only for the custom events, the workflows inside it. You may have just spotted that there's some other options. Schedule a custom event is very similar to triggering it with the only difference being that you can add a delay of five seconds or 15 seconds. Perhaps you want the user to first finish reading something like an, or seeing an animation before you then continue showing or hiding further pop-ups or information. Therefore, you can add a delay just to kind of show the similar action for API workflows. You could do the same and scheduled date can be current date time and then you can do plus seconds five. Okay. And then you may have seen that there's one other option, trigger a custom event when data changes. What is the potential use case of this one? Imagine you have a place, your app settings where users can update their username. Maybe you know from other sites that you get an email alerting you that you've made this change, just to be sure, you know, from a security perspective, that was actually you. So here I've also created a custom event called change personal data. With the difference is that unlike before where I created the FAQ and had the five steps, here I tell it to expect a user. Here I told it to expect nothing because we just created a new FAQ. We needed no further input because we could reach the current user easily. However, here we want to send an email when the custom event is triggered. And this email, we want to send it to the current workflow user. And to have access to current workflow user, we want to be able to send that user over. So over here, we have our input where the user can change their username. Or perhaps also, maybe you're an admin of a team which have all registered on Bubble, like a Trello team, if you're making a Trello clone with Bubble. So you want to also save, maybe uh, change the username of another user. So you can not only do it, of course, with current user, but also with kind of the user you've selected, like current user selected user. And what you can then do is, again, trigger the custom event when data changes, select the custom event, change personal data, we called it, this is the one which sends the email, told it to do a workflow data, the current user, and we want to watch the username. So whenever the username is changed of the current user, or maybe of the currently selected user, then we could send over this email. So this allows you to trigger a custom event whenever data changes in your app, which can also, of course, save you a lot of time. Okay, so to sum it up, we just use custom events to quickly make the same workflows work for three buttons, which all have those workflows. So we only have to make the amendment once and not for every button. Backend workflows offer a similar functionality, but server side instead of client side. And if you want to have custom events working on different pages without having to create new custom events on each page, you can use a reusable element. Finally, we triggered events whenever data such as the current user's username or someone's username changes, we can easily write an email or trigger other workflow actions. Hope this helped you. For short tips on Bubble, check tiplister.com. Cheers.